Hey there! In today's video we are talking about strength-based writing versus deficit-based writing. So this is a super important, relatively new to us concept that we are super excited to be learning. And strength-based writing has been uh, definitely challenging our idea of what story and how much urgency we are putting into our grant narrative. So we'll talk all about it in this video, so let's get into it. <laughs> I just want to say that at Learn Grant Writing, we are always striving to learn and better ourselves right alongside the students in our Learn Grant Writing Unicorn Collective. So there's no shame here in realizing that maybe what you've been doing in the past isn't quite the best approach. We are here for that and we are doing the work, getting humbled right alongside you. Deficit-based or wrong writing versus strength-based or strong writing involves a shift from focusing on what is broken to instead focusing on what is working, and this is mostly as it relates to what we're talking about in the grant narrative. But in the research world, this is known as deficit-based thinking versus uh, strong strength-based thinking. Essentially, awareness of these concepts help us as grant writers balance the importance of illustrating uh, the urgency of a problem to be solved, because there's always a problem to be solved, with the importance of using positive language in a grant narrative. So to help us kind of work through this, um, new concept, this process. We talked to Kate at Wellspring Group Consulting, so that was super helpful. Thanks for your insight, Kate, and also did a bunch of research on her own. Why does strong writing even matter? What is the big deal with this whole thing? Well, negative language, facts, uh, or highlighting major gaps can often have the effect of othering. So when a grant reviewer is reading through your narrative and they're just constantly seeing this barrage of negativity, they're probably not going to, one, think very highly of this place or organization or people group that you're talking about, and two, they're going to associate that as something other than themselves, their place, um, and where they're coming from. And furthermore, wrong writing leads readers and the audience or the grant reviewer to believe that negative characteristics of this place or people group are inherent rather than the result of circumstances. And wrong writing also treats people in places less as multifaceted partners and more like simplified objects of charity, uh, which I know can be a little bit confusing. We, you probably are writing grants for nonprofits or charities, um, but that doesn't mean that this charity or nonprofit organization can't be part of the solution as well, or that this community that they're serving can't be part of the, the solution as a partner in the problem solving. One thing to keep in mind is that strength-based writing does not equal positivity whitewashing. So we're not just simply removing all the challenges and all the problems from our grant narrative because there is a problem that we're trying to solve. That's why we're pursuing grant funding. That's why this organization exists. All funders want to see and know and understand the problem that applicants are addressing and solving because they want their dollars to go towards something good. That's their, that's why they exist. And if we were to do this, uh, this what positivity whitewashing, then it would introduce the question of if everything is so great, what's the problem at all? Why do you need our money in the first place? So we do need to point out the problem. And it's really a balance, right? Strong writing prompts us to, again, just shift focus to build on strengths rather than continue to grind on the deficiencies of the community we actually really want to serve. We don't want to be talking about how, you know, deficient and negative this community is because we, we love the community, right? So that's, we want to strike a, a nice balance there. So how can we as grant writers incorporate more strength-based writing into our grant narratives? First of all, we're going to start with our mental models. So I'm going to just read the quick the definition of a mental model really quick for you. Um, it's a personal internal representation of external reality that people use to interact with the world around them. So these models are constructed by individuals based on their unique life experiences, perceptions, and general understandings of the world. So mental models are used to reason and make decisions and can also be the basis of individual behaviors. So mental models provide the mechanism through which new information is filtered and stored. 
So it is super, super important that we are aware of our mental models as grant writers. How are we interpreting the information and data from our client and then reiterating that uh, in our grant narrative? As grant writers, we are very often coming into a new community or new to us community and we're expected to get up to speed pretty darn quickly on what the community's needs and strengths are. So being aware of our mental models is key as we are coming at, up to speed with the community. And one question you can ask yourself as you're, you know, working with a new new organization or new community is does this language that I'm using in my narrative match how the community actually wants to be represented? Is it how I would want to be represented? And that will be a really solid guiding post for you as you're continuing your grant narrative writing. One thing we can do is dig a little deeper. So it's super easy to focus on the biggest negative statistic that you can find of the community, like the super low graduation rate, for example, but strong writing invites us to look beyond data that feeds a deficit-based approach. So yeah, we should probably still include that low graduation data point, but that doesn't need to be the main driver of the story that we're telling in the grant narrative. So how do we dig deeper in the first place? Well, we can do more research, look at different data sources. We can talk to the community members themselves and ask what is going really well in the community. You know, like what are your, what are you most proud of? What are your biggest strengths? And furthermore, we can ask about what resources are currently available and how those resources that the community developed um, might be bolstered to help uh, solve the problem and how we can incorporate that into the grant narrative too. So this uh, point definitely toes the line of program and project development, which is often outside the purview of a grant writer and this video as well. But one quick tip that we want to, that I wanted to share with you is to have a conversation at your kickoff meeting, so the initial meeting of the, the grant writing project with your client and just share about the strength-based approach. And so this will, encourage them to think a little bit differently if they're not already they maybe are um, but then the data and projects that they're sending to you will match this this new strength-based approach this strength-based mental model idea and this will impact the quality of your narrative as well so a, a quick overview of the differences um, between a deficit-based mental model and a strength-based mental model i'll just give you a few examples um, a deficit-based mental model would say we're going to implement programs as the answer versus a strength-based mental model would say we see people as the answer. We see the people of the community as the answer. Uh, another example would be an us versus them approach. Um, that's a deficit-based mental model while a strength-based mental model would look like we're all in this together. There is no othering. We, it is us. We, it is a we situation. Uh, a deficit-based mental model would assume dependence, uh, while a strength-based mental model would work on increasing sustainability. And finally, uh, what I've kind of already talked about or alluded to is that a deficit-based mental model focuses on what is broken, uh, while a strength-based mental model or strength-based approach focuses on what is working. Another thing you can do is to use logic models to inform your strengths as you're working to incorporate more strong writing in your narrative. So basically a logic model is a planning and accountability tool that a lot of organizations and businesses use. So it's a depiction or picture that illustrates um, the relationship between a program's activities and its intended effects. So it offers a continuous feedback loop of where an organization is on the roadmap. So uh, included in the logic model would be inputs, you know, what we're putting in, the activities, what activities we're going to be doing as uh, in, within this program, the outputs, you know, what are, you know, some of the, the outputs, what co what's coming out of this, uh, out of our activities, and the outcomes as well. So outcomes would include short-term, mid-term, and long-term, and all of those would equal the impact that we as an organization or we uh, with our program are, is having. Um, so when we're evaluating our projects through logic models, it helps us really, really clearly identify the major gaps along with our significant strengths that we're bringing to the table. 
So knowing our strengths is huge because that will help us better approach writing future grant narratives if the goal is to include more strong writing. And we also have a whole video on grant evaluation and logic models, which is uh, linked below in the description. Again, thanks to Kate. So uh, take a look at that if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that. So finally, the last uh, big tip that we have for you if you're trying to incorporate more strong writing is to focus on systems. So this looks like instead of using language that focuses on individuals, use language that focuses on the system itself. So you might use language that highlights how system disparities and a history of community-wide problems have systemic roots versus it's just inherent, right? So very often it's, it's not inherent, it's a result of many different circumstances over a period of time. So you can emphasize how these root causes have created problems, uh, that they're not self-caused problems, and work to clearly explain those systems as uh, much as possible. So this approach goes over really, really well with progressive funders, and one example of a progressive funder would be the Ford Foundation. So if you were to look up uh, the Ford Foundation uh, just online and check out their website, they've identified five underlying drivers of inequality, and that is definitely worth checking out, um, you know, what they've identified, because it might help you, you know, brainstorm a little bit more for your next grant narrative or your next um, project with your client, just to kind of get the wheels turning a little bit for you. So that's just again, focusing on systems rather than on individuals. So we know that this is hard. This is a difficult challenge to overcome. Developing a new habit is difficult always, but I think this one is especially difficult. If you have been, you know, doing a lot of deficit-based writing your whole life or your career, this is a big shift to, to make. Um, because it's more than just words, right? It's not just the language we're using. It's an entire shift in our mental models and being aware of how we're filtering information and how we're uh, distributing that information as well. So one thing you might uh, find helpful would be to draft up a list of questions to just sort of check in with, with yourself as you're working on a project, as you're uh, you know, working through a grant narrative Questions you could ask yourself would be, what story am I telling? What's the focus of that story? Is it the low graduation rate or is the graduation rate only part of it? Like, am I also incorporating other main focuses? What is the community doing well? What is working? Am I using positive language in this grant narrative? Am I using enough positive language? Have I spoken with community members? Have I actually gone in as a grant writer and talked to a couple of different folks in the community? Because that's going to be huge. One, if you're struggling with, you know, this whole concept of othering and seeing this community as other than you or other than where you're coming from, when you can sit down and talk with someone and have just a real face-to-face -face or, you know, on the phone or virtual Zoom call conversation, that makes it so much more real and there's so much more empathy to be gained in that than just reading through a community plan or reading through the, the city website. And lastly, and I think this is the kicker too, is am I telling the whole truth? Am I really telling the whole truth in this grant narrative? Because that's the goal, right? We we want to be transparent with our funders and, and transparent with our community. We that we're serving. We want to represent them well and get them the funding that they, you know, could utilize to solve a really important problem. But we want to make sure that we're not focusing on just the, the negative aspects of this community or this problem, but also bringing in some of the positive activities or programs that have already been implemented in the community and how that can be really helpful and how the community can partner with this funder. So is your mind blown yet? <laughs> because ours definitely is when we first started learning about this and we're still learning, we're still working on this too. Uh, one thing we are considering is Parado's principle, which is that deficit-based writing would account for 20% of our grant narrative while strength-based writing would account for the other 80%. So again, it's a balance. We're working to strike that balance. And also, we just want you to give yourself some grace as you commit to working on this with us. We're working on it too. We're constantly learning. And we would encourage you to you know, do the same thing as well. And if you're interested in more grant writing tips, check out the free grant writing course that we have linked below. 
and that will give you a better overview of grant writing and a bit of a brief intro into our Learn Grant Writing Unicorn Collective. So, uh, so that is strength-based writing versus deficit-based writing. Thanks for watching!